a Buddhist temple high in the Himalayas. Prayer wheels powered by mountain streams and stupas lining the roadway. Signs of harmony with nature are everywhere here. For the people of Bhutan, glaciers and mountains are sacred. Like these 7,000 meter peaks at the border to Tibet, though the glacier's days appear to be numbered. The ice is melting due to climate change, as shown on this animation by the WWF and the UN. The glacial lakes have become a major flood threat. Nearly 20 mountain lakes are currently at risk. The most devastating flood in Bhutan happened in 1994. A lot of the properties were damaged as the flood, you know, uh, you know came down and uh, it also, you know, uh, claimed some of the lives. But many mountain villages don't benefit from the glacier-fed streams. They have to rely on the rains of the monsoon season. In the south of Bhutan, the monsoon season is normally in July. But in recent years, the heavy rains have come to Sirange earlier, in the month of May. The seeds sown by local farmers were washed from the fields. And the rainwater vanishes almost as suddenly as it appeared. Springs are running dry and mountain streams have slowed to a trickle. According to the UN, more than 60% of Bhutan's population has no access to clean drinking water. About 4,500 people live in Sirangte. Most homes and the new hospital are connected to large rainwater tanks. But hardly anyone drinks the water out of fear of bacterial contamination. It's a sad situation. Should it arise, it will be a disaster to this community. And as health providers, we may get a cross-infection. We head out to see the source of the village's water supply, some 16 kilometers away. Village leader Nandara Karel wants to show an environmental expert the situation they're facing here. There have been frequent disputes with the neighboring villages. The rules for access to spring water are strict. Namge, who works for Bhutan's Tariyana Foundation, hopes to improve water management here. The project receives support from the International Climate Initiative. This water belongs to another group. We've already spoken many years ago that we can share the water for cultivation. Everything but Sirangte. They also have 400 households and a population of four to 5,000. So they're dipping into this water. At least they share the drinking water with us, but it's not a solution. Our source is drying day by day because of uh, uh, climate change and uh, deforestation, as well as uh, farm root uh, construction and so many things. The young students who attend Sirangte's central school are also affected by the water shortage. The 860 students have just one source of water for bathing and laundry. The only source of drinking water is in the kitchen. The students carry buckets of water to bathe in and to flush the toilets. They don't have enough water to wash their body, neither they have uh, water to wash their clothes. And uh, because of that one, they get all sorts of skin diseases and that is one very big challenge. The narrow valley in the south of Bhutan, near the border to India, has a subtropical climate. At the valley's edge lies the village of Dechen Pelri. The water supply is a problem here too. The monsoon has become irregular, and when it does rain, the torrential downpours often wreak havoc. When the rain falls, all the soils are coming down, and then all, like a landslide or erosions, are falling down, and they're destroying the water source. Through Iki project, we want to do that uh, totally mountain uh, re replantation. Here in the valley, the fields are small. Jambe and his wife mainly plant maize and chilies. It's a lot of work. There's a thin layer of soil with rock underneath. Heavy rains wash away the soil and then there's rock everywhere. These plastic sheets protect their fields from weeds and erosion. Jambe and his wife sell part of their harvest. Chilies and cardamom fetch a good price. The village built a water tank to irrigate their fields. The water comes from the mountains through plastic pipes, but they're often damaged in landslides. And then there's the elephants. 
They come into the village almost every night, small groups of young elephants. Usually they tear off clusters of bananas or bamboo plants. Five minutes later, they leave. We try to scare them off with noise and our flashlights. In the nearby town of Gelafu, the elephants venture right up to the houses, often damaging cars or farmers' fields. A few months ago, a local resident was killed by an elephant. An electric fence is being built to keep the elephants out. That way, the herds will stay in their natural habitat, where they have an important role to play. The elephant is an architect of the forest. He decides what the forest is going to look like. And uh, if there's a thick bushes, uh, he just go in, he trample it, and it, he opens up for the regeneration of forest. Bhutan's forests are important to the country's water supply. They also play a vital role in maintaining biodiversity and protecting the climate. Tiny Bhutan is doing its best to adapt to climate change. The residents of the mountainous kingdom have little other choice. <laughs>